This is a 3D printed vault with a six lever detector lock. It offers way more security than you might expect and has several anti-pick features to frustrate anybody who tries to get this open without the correct key. This lock design was originally invented in the mid 19th century for use in post offices, banks, and other high security functions. And while these locks have been superseded by more modern designs, they are still extremely effective. Turning the key lifts each lever to an exact position, aligning the cutouts, and allowing the bolt to glide through the gap and unlock the door. What sets this design apart is the detector, which is this green lever in the back. If any of the six levers are lifted too high, which I will illustrate by turning a false key, it will trip the detector, which completely jams the lock. If we watch that again more closely, you can see that lever number four is lifted too high, which also lifts the detector, and the detector stays up. In this position, the cutout on the detector is too high and prevents the bolt from moving, even with the correct key. If someone tries to pick this lock, it is very likely that they will lift one of these levers too high and trip the detector, which will keep the door locked until it is reset. The detector is reset by turning the correct key clockwise and pushing the bolt to the right. This only works if the levers are lifted to the correct height, which creates a pocket for the bolt to move. So if a lock picker wants to reset this, they essentially need to pick the lock in reverse. And that's assuming they know there is a detector. If they don't, they could spend a lifetime trying to pick this lock and it would never open. To make picking this lock even more difficult, I added a curtain, which is this blue piece. It encases a keyhole and leaves a narrow slot where the key is inserted. A lock picker needs to get their tools inside the lock to access the levers, but the curtain restricts access to only a small sliver. The last feature is the ward, which is an obstruction in the keyway which blocks a key from turning without the correct cutout. Shown here with the levers removed, you can see that the cutout on the key goes perfectly around the wards, so if a key does not have the right cutout, it won't be able to turn at all. This design is really compact given how complex it is, and I intentionally kept the overall dimensions below 7 inches so it can be printed on smaller printers like the Bamboo Labs A1 Mini and the Prusa Mini. If you want to build one of these for yourself, the files are available for free on Maker World and Printables. So now, let me show you how this goes together. These are all the parts for the door itself including four metal dowels and seven screws, plus seven threaded inserts, which I already added to the vault frame and lock cap. I'll start by gluing together these three pieces, which form the core of the door, and this will serve as a backdrop for the lock on the front and the vault on the back. The vault track has an indentation, which corresponds to a peg in the vault frame, which ensures it is installed correctly. Now, I'll glue in two metal dowels, which are 5 mm in diameter and 35 mm long. These must be installed perpendicular to the face of the frame, so I made a jig to hold them in place while the glue dries. If these are not perpendicular, the lock will not function properly, so the jig is absolutely essential. The core of the door is now complete, and next I'll begin assembling the lock. The bolt is added first, and this has a small pin on the back, which I glued together earlier. When we turn the key, it pushes the bolt back and forth, and the pin on the back transfers this motion to the bolt mechanism. The bolt spring, lever spring, and detector springs are added next. The detector spring should be a pretty tight friction fit, but if it's loose, just add a drop of glue to keep it in place. The other two springs will be held in place by the cap, so no need to glue them. Add the detector lever and make sure the detector spring does not get in the way. When we turn the key, it will lift this lever to the correct height and the bolt can move. If the detector is lifted too high, the triangular part of the spring drops down and holds it in place. As I mentioned earlier, the detector is reset by turning the key clockwise and pushing the bolt to the right, which lifts the detector spring back into place. The rest of the levers go on next, and they have little indentations which indicate the order of installation. A 
a peg extends from the face of the detector and rests over the remaining levers. If any of the levers are lifted too high, it will also lift the detector and bind the lock. With all the levers in place, add the curtain and test it out. The curtain will be a bit loose, but that's intentional. It will be held in place when we add the cap, which is the next step. I already assembled the lock cap by adding the handle pieces and threaded inserts. Place the cap over the lock and secure it with three screws on the back. The lock is now complete and it should be very smooth. Use the key to test the mechanism and make sure the detector is functioning properly. Now it's time to assemble the vault mechanism, but before I do that, I want to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. Whether you need custom PCBs, CNC machining, or 3D printing, you can be certain PCBWay will deliver with the quality your project demands. Placing orders on the website is simple, prices are affordable, and delivery is fast. So if you're working on a project that needs a special part, PCBWay has you covered. You can use the link in the description to get $5 off your first order. So if you need custom PCBs, 3D printing, or CNC services, now is the time to give PCBWay a try. Thank you to PCBWay for supporting this video. Now back to the vault. The blue piece is the central cog which is mounted to the frame with a skateboard bearing. The recess on the underside of the cog must align with the red pin on the lock bolt, so get them lined up and push the cog into place. Turning the key will make the cog rotate. The vault bolts are added next, and these are made up of three pieces which I glued together earlier. The green arm has two loops, one of which is slightly thicker than the rest of the arm. Insert the thinner loop into the bolt with the thicker edge facing the same way as the pin. The vault cap is added next, and this appears to be symmetrical, but one edge is actually slightly tapered to prevent the door from binding. So I added alignment pegs on one side, which aligns with recesses in the vault track. Screw the cap into place and test out the mechanism. The last piece we need to add is the cog cap, which is glued to the center and holds the eight arms in place. With the door complete, the box itself has a few pieces. I'm adding some weight to the back of the box to offset the weight of the door, so the box won't tip over when the door is open. This is optional, but I definitely recommend it. A cap is added to hide the weights. The jam is printed in two pieces which need to be glued together. This could have been printed as a single piece using support material to pick up the overhang, but I always prefer printing in multiple pieces and gluing them together rather than using support material. The jam glues to the box, and there are alignment cutouts to ensure that it is glued in the correct orientation. There are recesses on the bottom where rubber feet can be added, although this is optional. Now I'll just drop the door into place and add two metal dowels to secure the hinges. And this vault is complete.
I also created a fully enclosed lock cap with a sliding keyhole cover inspired by 19th century padlocks. This gives you the option to use the open cover if you want to showcase a lock, or use the enclosed cover to obscure the lock and keep out intruders. As I mentioned earlier, the files can be downloaded on Maker World and Printables. If you want to make this, but don't want to deal with the threaded inserts and screws, you can just glue the parts together, which obviously means it can't be taken apart later. I included some printable pins, which can be inserted through the screw holes to help align the parts if you choose to glue them. If you watched this far, please leave a comment and let me know what you think, or if you have any questions. I'm also in search of suggestions for other lock designs that I can recreate, so let me know if you have any ideas. Thanks for watching.